those in business know this as a principle that if you want to move fast, move as an individual. But if you want to reach far, you got to move with others. Now, our entrepreneur today has mastered that principle, and here's the story. We had value to cereals and grain, peanut butter and honey. We work with women groups, farmer groups from northern Uganda. Yonostar Produce and Food Processor started early as a, a family business at home. We did not start it here. And how it started, I was working as a national coordinator at Uganda Episcopal Conference, coordinating the project that supports orphans and vulnerable children. And in the projects, we were supporting children with tuition fee, uh, vocational training, income generating activities. People in Northern Uganda were involved in agriculture. So we worked closely with the caregivers in Northern Uganda by producing agricultural products. Later on, we were seeing that these products were not being bought. Then I got an idea of adding value to what these ladies were producing. So I bought the first product was from Biale, 70 kilo, brought it to Kampala, cleaned it together with them, and then we packed it in a cavera and started selling it. And eventually the demand from the product started growing. There were a few supermarkets. For example, I can still remember the supermarket that we started, what was Star Supermarket, which was in Kampala Road. We started growing like that until we added other products according to the demands of people. We started a composite product that was soya millet. In 2003, we registered the company as a sole proprietor at first. And then in 2014, after some trainings and getting in touch with other business women, joining the women organization like You Will, joining the professional business women of Uganda, joining the women entrepreneur of DFCU Bank, I got involved in many trainings, follow-ups, which made me now to register the company as a corporate company with shareholders with my family and my children. What inspired me to start these projects of uh, producing the grain is, and cereals, it started from my background. Because I'm from Northern Uganda, from Gulu district, where I got involved as a young girl in producing, in growing this millet. Started clearing the lands, planting the seed, weeding, winua, grinding at first by stone. So with that experience that I grew up from my primary level up to secondary level, I learned a lot on this. There are some factors that has made me stay in business and remain in business up to now. I was lucky when the private sector foundation brought in, brought in a project for supporting people in branding and then satisfying your products. So I, apply, I applied for that project. When I applied for the project, I was awarded. I was given someone to brand for me. I had to look for someone to do the branding. So I got a lady from Norway. This branding was done by a, a white lady from Norway who did the branding for me. She changed a lot from the branding which I had before. At first I didn't like it, but now I love it. I was packing in the cavera. I was not packing in the boxes. It was not in these boxes which are looking nice. The whole funding which I got from five private sector foundation changed a lot. They did the certification of my products, UNBS, and after now getting that first, they satisfied two products. It was pure millet and peanut butter. And I had to buy standard from National Bureau of Standard. There is a standard which you buy to allow you to run your company, the form which you have to follow. The standards on the teamwork, the staff, the cleanliness of the place, and then how you should do your products. And the auditing, when they came, there was a lot of challenge. The first time I failed, but when I followed what they wanted is how I also reached here. I even saw that where I was doing my product was not worthy enough to produce those quality products which I should put on the shelf. So I followed the standards 
and the auditing reports and the process that UNBS did for us. And this came as networking and working with other organizations. If I was alone in my factory, hidden there, I wouldn't have learned a lot. I learned as I go for training, there was formation. We had also trainings on documentation that at a business you have to register. That's why I had to register my business since 2014. You have to have an accounting system, which I did. I, have a, I put a quick book and then have a van, a closed vehicle that is supposed to be used to produce food. Set your premises very clean. Use stainless machines. And these are the type of quality. And then the quality of the products. I had to learn. I had to take my product for testing with UNBS. As a result of the setting up of this of Yellow Star Company, I've been able to do a lot of things. I've educated my children. I've educated my relatives. I have my own. I learned how to drive. I have achieved certain awards. In 2015, I was awarded by Uganda Investment Authority as the Woman Entrepreneur of the Year 2015. And that was really, and that award was given by Ministry of Trade. I've got several challenges in my businesses. Financial challenges is one of the things I have gone through because you produce these products, we have marketed the products, you get the order, you supply them, on credit, it takes months. Some people even close with your, super, with your money in the supermarket. Remember, Metro, Payless, Tusky, Soprite, all these at least went with my money. And those are the challenges. In the beginning, I used to cry when people don't pay me. Eventually, I came over it and I said, no, this is, I think that's how business is run. There's a drive today to have as many Ugandans as possible go into circles as a way of encouraging the culture of saving. Now, saving is one thing, but remember it's an organization that needs proper management skills. How do you manage a circle? That's our focus today. The, the message to, to the people outside there who are managing circles or who are in circles and are facing difficulties, most of the difficulties in, in circles is people not paying back. Now, those are bad debtors. And there are so many ways of handling bad debtors. But I want you to tell you the fact that, and I repeat it, that the, the, the I, I can say the the reason why the circle was formed forms the basis of how people are going to pay back. Right now, the economic situation outside is not good. But if you see people coming and paying, that means they love their thing. But one, you have to separate management from, I can call it, friendship. Because you see circles are formed with people who, are, who know each other. Like but what, yes, but once you are made a chair or a committee member and you're on the board, please separate management from friendship. Do what corporate governance demands of you. And two, stick to the principles, the guidelines or the policies which are stated in, in the bylaws. If it is charge this, charge this, please follow the rules. And one of the things we do for us is we do name and shame. Because this is an association of people. Once you fail to pay our money, it, 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 doesn't, it, it doesn't take us anything to shame you to the people whom you are defaulting. Okay? And there's nothing bigger than the name that you have created. So, the circles out there, please strengthen the management. It is the management that will make the circle move. How you are going to move those people matters a lot. This step, we are going to measure her weight, the fat she has in her body. This is also going to help us manage. As we give you a diet, we manage whether you, we have to know whether you're overweight, you're underweight, 
your obese. So that helps us in our management. So here you have to feed in your age because it helps us to calculate your BMI too as per age. We get to know if exactly what you have is what you should be having at your age and based on your height. So she's going to come here and we take her height. Sitting height is also very important. So we have to take the leg length. This also helps us determine the right diet that we should give and body type. Finger length, it's going to help us. You can find that the index finger or ring finger is longer. So from there, the results that we've got from the machine we feed in here, the weight, uh, fat index. Fat index is the percentage of fat that you have as per your weight. So her weight is 58.3, fat index is 30 to 32% of this weight is fat. So her fat mass is 18.6 kilograms. And the free fat mass is 39.7 kilograms. So that means this is the fat mass of the 58.3, 18.6 is fat. So the, the flesh is 39.7. So we shall have the fat ranges, the fat index range here, which is 17 to 24%. The normal fat is 8.1 to 12.5 kilograms. That means she has an excess fat of, you get the 18.6 minus 12.5. So she has an excess of 6.1 kilograms excess fat. Now this is the fat that she has to cut out using either the weight, the diet, sorry, or exercise. So now what we are going to do, I'm going to take her pressure then I'll also check for her blood group and blood glucose levels. So her pressure is normal. And now, blood group. So these are instant kits. So for these kits that we use here, you can get to know your blood group in life. leg length, the fingerprints, the height, she belongs to the nomad. So this is the genotype. Her genotype is nomad. So I have to get for her a nomad genotype diet, showing her what she should eat and not eat, even the exercise profile. So her weight is 58.3. Normal weight is between 43.7 to 57.5. That means she's overweight. Her BMI is 25.3. Normal BMI is between 18.5 to 29.5. So here, since she has very little weight uh, that's above the normal and her fat is 6.1, we are not going to give her supplements because she's just overweight. So we shall just give her diet and maybe tell her the right exercise profile to follow. These are some of the foods that are inside. So with the diets, we, we show you what you should eat and not eat. Our diets are both local, have both local and international food. So even though you travel outside, you can still uh, use the diet. After passing through the foods, we also have uh, at the end, there is an exercise profile. So here we tell you the exercises that are good for you. Here we treat more of the root cause of the pressure, not the pressure itself. That's why at the end of the day, you, you will continue with your chemical medication for some time as you are taking these supplements and doing the exercises and then eventually you can always go back to your physician, you can go and then eventually you reduce your dose and eventually you will find yourself medicine free. Instead of every day increasing your dosage for pressure, you start reducing it and eventually your pressure should have gone. These supplements are blood group specific, we have blood group B, so this is deflex for blood group B, this is polyflora for blood group B. So, these supplements according to your blood group and genetic formation taken once in a lifetime and that will be the end of the story that's all we had for you in this week's edition of anand market thank you for being part of the show i've been your host charles Boji. now from me and tim 
would like to wish you a very good evening and God bless.